Spice and Wolf, Volume 17, Epilogue by Asuna Hasakura. Intermission. The story opens with Enek, a sheepdog knight, lying on the steps of a church in a small town. A Cooper woman asks if the priest is inside, mentioning that children saw a black, possibly haunted carriage arrive. Enek leads her inside to the scribe room, where they find the priest, Nora, asleep at her desk amid sewing materials. Nora, embarrassed, tries to hide the sewing tools. The woman says a carriage has arrived, possibly the one Nora mentioned being called to somewhere far off. Nora suddenly remembers and rushes out, pulling up her long outfit. Outside, a tall, dignified woman named Eve Bolin emerges from the black carriage. She looks Nora over and sighs, saying she'll take care of necessities and they're leaving today, stopping other places like the letter said. Nora only needs scripture if she gets lonely at night. Eve returns to the carriage, leaving Nora standing still before she looks to Enoch. In the moving carriage, Nora gazes out the window, Enoch on her lap. She reflects on how meeting Lawrence and Holo changed her life when she was a trapped, scared shepherdess. Eve asks if Nora is anxious heading out, since town priests rarely journey far. Nora admits she wanted to go out before when she couldn't. Eve asks if she met her in that town, but Nora says no. The church just took care of her when she was a scared lamb before becoming a shepherdess, which is how she met those two who saved dragged her into conflict. Eve shares she met them farther north when they visited along their way. She compares herself to a wounded wolf and Nora to a timid lamb that they aided, making her envious. She jokes she'd make a poor cat burglar, hinting at her feelings for Lawrence. Nora says people come to church not expecting God to solve everything, but they still come. She can't explain it well, but it's like a pilgrimage for her and Eve. They arrive at another town to pick up Diana. The raven-haired Diana exudes a different air than Eve and Nora. Her calm smile and demeanor hide a personality closer to Eve's. She asks if they're friends of that man's, doubting he could handle multiple liaisons. Eve says it doesn't seem so, and Diana, as their senior in life experience, shares a tale of love from her town about the couple's lack of honesty nearly leading to a duel over Holo. The three bond over their exasperation with Lawrence and Holo's foolishness. Over the next days, they pick up two more women, a strict priest and a traveling silversmith. The five chat endlessly about their relationships to the couple. Enek sometimes rides on the luggage wagon roof for peace. He muses that while it greatly matters to those involved, it's like they're all searching for a rainbow's end when it's right where they stand. He keeps this profound dog notion to himself, feeling it unnecessary to share. Conclusion. Lawrence has a headache over the letters Hollow sent to Eve, Nora, Diana, Elsa, and more, inviting them to a banquet during the spring festival. She left the men to him. He can't refuse now without facing her wrath. He visits Call, the ghostwriter, to discern Hollow's state when she had him write the letters. Call says she was smiling, not angrily, but buoyantly. This worries Lawrence more. Three years into construction on their bathhouse, they're behind schedule, but pushing to open first before arrival. Hollow found a promising hot spring in a cave in just two days. Lawrence frequently kisses and compliments her, leaving secretarial work piling up. Still, there's occasional friction, like local girls flirting with Lawrence until he firmly refused them. Hollow didn't speak to him for a week after, then called him a fool. Lawrence orders fine food, drink, and music for the banquet to impress, no matter Holo's expensive tastes. He invites all his acquaintances like Hild, Leroy, Hugh, Keeman, Huskins, Mark, but agonizes over who to include. Holo's condition improves as the date nears. She helps scare animals away from their stores. Lawrence realizes he's come to rely on Cole, who arranges most details. Guests begin arriving, including Eve's group. Holo seems to be plotting something with her invitations. Lawrence unveils a special sign Jean Milica crafted in Svalnell for the bathhouse. Right before greeting everyone, Holo astonishes Lawrence by implying she's pregnant, wanting to brag to them all. Overwhelmed with joy, he embraces her, not caring about the watching crowd. Thus opens the legendary Spice and Wolf bathhouse, a place of smiles and happiness. Traveling merchant and gray knight Lawrence and Hollow take shelter from rain in a dilapidated stone building on an empty plain. Hollow asks how Lawrence knew it was there. 
He stumbled on it lost three years ago when someone still lived there. The eccentric old man shot arrows at Lawrence, thinking him a thief. Upon learning he was a starving merchant, the man, Freed, invited him to a feast. Freed's fort was entrusted to him ten years ago with five men, but they dwindled until only he remained, with no visitors but the lost. He serves Lawrence a hearty meal and ale, warning him not to overeat or he won't be able to leave. As they dine, Freed explains he was a knight who earned the fort in battle but was betrayed. With no family, he lives there with his horse and chickens. Lawrence ends up staying a month, helping with chores and hearing Freed's tales. Freed gifts him an engraved dagger as thanks. But one morning, Lawrence finds him dead of old age. He buries Freed with his sword, taking the dagger, and leaves the animals as nature intended. Holo listens intently, understanding the story's significance to Lawrence. Gray smiling face and wolf call reflects on his time with Lawrence and Holo as he copies manuscripts in the new bathhouse. Meeting them as a boy opened his world. Hollow imparted wisdom while teasing and arguing with Lawrence. She hated being called a god, but acted divine, like when she rescued Call and a friend from a collapsing mine by holding up the timbers. Years later, Call is now their apprentice while studying to be a scholar. He hopes to solve the mystery of Hollow's existence. As he ponders, Holo approaches and banters with him. She admits she stayed with Lawrence because of Call to help raise him. Call is touched, even though she ends up teasing him. White Path and Wolf. Hollow dreams of running through snow as a wolf, seeking her homeland Yoitsu. She's conflicted about staying with Lawrence as he ages. At the mountain summit, she finds no pack, only an old wolf who doesn't recognize her. She howls in anguish before waking. Lawrence comforts Holo, understanding her dream's meaning. She doesn't want to face a Yoitsu where none remember her. As dawn breaks, he promises to be by her side as long as he lives. Hollow feels reassured and at peace. If you enjoyed this summary, please consider subscribing to the channel.